Hi guys, today I'll be playing Dr. Morgan's counseling session where you meet your totally normal counselor. Next, you're snapped out of your days. All right, counseling. You step forward to the receptionist, wallet in one hand. A plastic insurance card lies between your index and thumb as you dart your eyes around and avoid eye contact. Name, what's your name? Please, Ring ring. Um, checking in, you say hesitantly as you slide the card out and slide it across the counter. The receptionist lets out a huff or is it a sigh and takes a, the card. The keyboard clicks loudly as they type their, your information in. Your hands get your debit card ready for the copay. You rehearse the words you say when you ask for your payment, the exact limits you make, the pin number you typed after and. Alright, you're all checked in. What? You look up at your insurance card as it's handed back to you. You fumble with your wallet as you put your insurance card back in its slot. You nervously shuffle your feet, waiting for the receptionist to ask for you to pay for your visit, but... They'll call you up when you're ready. Is there anything else I can help you with? Despite the words, they're not even turned towards you, sorting through their files instead. Oh, uh, no, it's nothing. You duck your head down and turn to find a seat in the waiting area, with your debit card still pinched between your fingers. Why hadn't they asked you to pay like always? A pit began to form in your stomach as you sat down. Fidgeting with your debit card, you ultimately decided to put it away and pocket your wallet. It's entirely possible that your insurance just covered the visit in its entirety, right? However, despite being a frequent visitor here for over a year, it had never happened, not even once. The time went by as you rested your hands on your knees, taking in the details of the ceiling. After a restless silence, the door to the office opened. Mary, The voice is unfamiliar, causing you to hesitate for a moment. That isn't my counselor. You look around nervously, your gaze falling on the receptionist from earlier. They catch your eye and raise an eyebrow before going back to their paperwork. That position is not here. Anxiety starts to gnaw at you as you tighten your grip on your knees. I'm getting a bad thing about this. Hmm. Well, we can answer. There's four endings to this game, so can I answer? I'll save here. So we can enter or leave. Let's just enter. Mimi, you here? The door opens a little wider. You get up and walk over, entering the office. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm here. You're greeted by a man with blonde hair and lively brown eyes. Oh, splendid! Right this way. He leads you down the hallway. It's an uncomfortably long walk with a couple of turns and down some stairs. You have no idea the office building was so big, you never had to venture this far in before. The man walked with a brisk pace, occasionally looking over his shoulder with a smile to make sure you were keeping up. His pace, is a, as well as the distance you were walking, started to tie you out a bit, so he slowed down and walked next to you. How are you doing today? The question made you jump a bit. I'm okay, you sure weren't well, sure of the answer yourself. He picked up on your tone, nodding. The signs that settled between you two felt awkward. Eventually, you both stopped by the door. An unfamiliar man took out some keys and thumbed them through, looking for the right key to unlock the door. He took this time to look at the door. Strangely enough, it didn't have a nameplate like all the others. <laughs> My God, this is when you run. It was blank where the name should be, as if the writing has been recently rubbed or cleaned off. Ah, there we go. His voice snaps you out of your observations. He's holding the door open, waiting for you. The room is dark. The pain in your stomach grows, anxiety gnawing as you step into the room. The light withdraws as he closes the door. The air is cold, sending a chill down your spine as you squint to try and make sense of your surroundings. Oh, I forgot to turn on the lights. How silly of me, he says with a featherlight laugh. His voice echoes around the room, suddenly lights flood the room. What the? The room was almost entirely empty, save for the plastic table and some metal chairs. Concrete walls and pillars surround you, metal pipes running along the ceiling. You were definitely underground somewhere. This was most certainly not your counselor's office. Before you could say anything, the man walks in front of you, fidgeting slightly. He was a bit embarrassed, a slight blush dusted his cheeks as he shyly avoided eye contact. Sorry, my budget isn't big enough to furnish my office, he says sheepishly, guiding you to the table. Bro, you can't have an office in, like underground. This doesn't make any sense. 
Your budget is the least of my worries right now. Wait, sorry, um, this isn't my... You say, stepping away from the man. He gives you a puzzled look before smiling again. Oh, I didn't even introduce myself yet. I'm Oliver Morgan, 26 years old. Though, since you're my patient, that'll be Dr. Morgan. Morgan is just fine, though, he says, reaching out to shake your hand. You pull away, holding your hand close to you. No, that's not what I was going to say. You aren't my usual therapist. I think there was a mistake. I have to go. The smile falls from his face, though his eyes still have a glint to them. You turn your back on him towards the door. You begin to turn the handle, except... What? Uh oh You jiggle the handle again and again. It doesn't turn. Why isn't it... Is this locked? Did you lock the door? You turn around to look at him. Morgan is uncomfortably close, standing two or three fa feet away, leaning forward. His face was a few inches away from yours as he boxed you in one of his arms. A calm smile was still blasted on his face, though it seems like his expression was starting to falter. Henry, come on, just take a seat and we can. He reaches for you again. Um, oh gosh. Do we stay still or do we punch him? Maybe we could try punching him. Eh, let's just do be aggressive. Let's punch his lights out. You push him away before winding your arm back and sucker punching him right in the face. Morgan falls to the floor with a thud. Well, that was easy. Leaning down, you shove your hand into his pockets, grabbing the keys. Turn it back towards the door, you go through the keys and try them one by one. With each passion moment, you can feel your heart rate pick up. Why are there so many damn keys? The one you want is the one with the blue rhinestones. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> hey, what? You turn around and Morgan is standing up, burning the side of his head. Ah, oh, that hurt. I didn't think he could punch so hard, he murmurs before smiling at you. You put the keys between your fingers as a sort of key knuckle weapon. Morgan stares at you, tilting his head. Let me go. Let me leave. You can't stop your voice from shaking. Morgan takes a step forward. You lunge at him, aiming for his stomach. He grabs your arm with ease, yanking you down. The momentum sends you hurtling t into the door. You groan, trying to straighten yourself up. The grip you had on the keys loosened. The key is sitting loosely in your palm now. Morgan kneels down, taking the keys off your hands and putting them back into his pocket. Now then, where were we, he says with a smile. You sit up looking at him fearfully and disoriented. Morgan reaches a hand out for you to take. Left with no other option, you take his hand and he helps you stand up and steady yourself, his other hand hovering on the small, small of your back. The small of your back? Morgan gently takes your hand and leads you to the table, seating you in an uncomfortable metal chair. He sits across from you, a small clipboard and a file sat on his side of the table. Morgan takes a second to grab something from under his seat and rubs it on his face. When he turns to face you again, the injury you left him with is mostly gone. He nervously stared at him as he organized the table. Is he even human? <laughs> Why does he keep blushing? Morgan ignores his just stare and he blushes a little before coughing and grabbing a file. So, anxiety, huh? He says, flipping through the file. Was he seriously going to try and be your counselor? Is this guy even licensed? So, tell me about it. What makes you so anxious? You give him an incredulous, incredulous look. What's making me anxious is that there's a guy pretending to be my counselor and not letting me leave. Morgan just smiles and gets down the folder, sets down the folder, clasping his hands together. I can see that you're hesitant to trust me, he begins, carefully choosing his words. But all I want is for the best for you. I want to help you, Minri. His tone is earnest as he speaks. You grit your teeth, crossing your arms, and furrowing your brows to try and seem intimidating. How can I trust you? I don't even know who you are. I came here expecting my usual counselor. Then you show up. Lead me into, what is this, a parking garage? It's my office, he corrects you. Yeah, your office that's under the building and surrounded by concrete walls. I told you they didn't give me much of a budget, he mumbles. Whatever this place is, you bring me in here and lock the door like a maniac. Morgan frowns a bit, playing with the edge of the paper on the clipboard looks like he has something to say to that. What's even on that file you have, you ask, reaching out. Morgan pulls the file away, holding it out of reach. It's your information. I'm your counselor now, so... I wonder if he's hell. This guy's just creepy. I'm like, hell you are. Give me it. You stand up and try to grab the file again. You catch the edge of the file, pulling it towards you. The contents come loose and spill onto the table. 
Pictures of you scattered on the table. They're all small portal boards, each labeled a date and description of the face or expression you were making. What the hell? What the hell is all this? You say, picking one up. You look up at Morgan, who's staring empathically at you. The glint in his eyes have vanished. Pictures of you, obviously. Ah, but don't touch him so carelessly. He has, reaching into his pocket. You back away fearfully, dropping the photo. Morgan simply takes out a pair of gloves, slipping them on. He picks the photos up carefully, organizing them and placing them back into the file. Once they are back where they belong, Morgan sighed, running a gloved hand through his hair. Ugh, my head hurts, he groans quietly. He looks tired. You could probably knock him out this time. Looks like I'll have to go with Plan B, he says, reaching under his seat. Plan B, you're ch just chiding with anxiety as you back away from the table. Yep, honestly, we could have done this the easy way, but... Ugh, what a shame. Morgan walks around the edge of the table, fastening a mask to his face. A cloth hangs out of his pocket. Now then, hold still, will you? He takes the, he says, taking the cloth in one hand before lunging for you. He's on top of you doing it and sent your hand, gripping his wrist, keeping the cloth away from your face. A slightly sweet smell wafts towards you. You can't read Marcus' expression, but his eyes darken at your resistance. He wasn't expecting you to struggle this much. Managing to push him off, you crawl towards the door and try to get away from Morgan. A hand grips your ankle, yanking you backwards. Let me go, you shriek, kicking him in the face as hard as you can. Morgan lets out a grunt for you, kicking him square in the face, his grip on your ankle loosening. You quickly pull up and stand up. Not wasting this chance, you tackle him to the floor, grabbing the cloth, you shove it under his mask. He shoves you off of him, standing up and ripping the mask off. Morgan sees Deus as he scatters, holding himself up with the table. Whatever he put on his face earlier wore off, exposing his injuries. Ugh, that seriously hurt, he mumbles before collapsing. Hopefully for good this time. You approach him, checking to make sure he's actually knocked out this time. Morgan was definitely knocked out. Grabbing the keys, you find the key with blue rhinestones and unlock the door. You run out, finding the exit as fast as you could. You run past the receptionist, who gives you a questioning look as you leave. Quickly spotting your car, you unlock and jump in, make sure to lock the door. Turning the engine on, you grip the steering wheel tightly as you spread out of the parking lot and away from the office. Ending 3, Escaped Counseling. <laughs> How did this guy just get an office in the building? Oh my god, that's so creepy. Oh. Alright, so there's three more endings to get. Sure, one ending ends up with us being kidnapped if we are compliant with them. So, we'll just wait and see. Alrighty, so I'm back and I'm going to try just leaving the office for now. This is way too much. You decide to leave and reschedule your counseling session. Getting up, you walk through the doors into the parking lot. You can't shake the feeling of being washed as you unlock your car. Goosebumps rise along the nape of your neck once you lock your car. Did you lock the doors before leaving? Was someone waiting in the back to kill you? Pernora gets a better view when you check the back seats, just in case. No one's there, right? Nothing's there. Of course there's nothing there. You locked the doors when you left your car. No one could have gotten in without smashing a window or something. You start the engine and begin to drive out of the parking lot. As you pass by the entrance of the office, you spot a man smiling at you in the window. A chill runs down your spine. He smiles as he watches you leave. You quickly look away, focusing on driving. You look when the driving wheel tightens. You felt sick. The pain in your stomach had only grown. Anxiety and paranoia clawing at your insides wanted to escape. You could feel bile rising in your throat, but you kept it in. He seems your counseling will have to wait another day. Ending one, reschedule your appointment. The safest ending without all the trauma. Alrighty, this time I will just be compliant and stay still. Morgan gently takes your hand and leads you to the table, seating you in an uncomfortable metal chair. He sits across from you, a small clipboard file sat on the side of the table. You nervously stared at him as he organized the table. Morgan notices your stare and he blushes a little before coughing and grabbing a file. So anxiety, huh? He says, flipping through the file. Alright, was it seriously? <laughs> Makes you so anxious. That was just so weird. Okay. It's my op. All right, so we're going to accept him as our new counselor. You sigh, letting your arms fall to your sides. You're too tired to argue anymore. 
You know what? Sure, you're my counselor for the day. Morgan's face immediately lights up by your words, his smile returning. I'm glad you accepted me. That makes me really happy, Mimi. Do you just... Do you have to say it in such a creepy way? Morgan clears his throat, his gaze suddenly serious despite his smile. Well, let's begin, shall we? He says, leaning forward a little. What's been bothering you, Moon Ray? You go, you still felt a little hesitant to tell this stranger your problems. It had taken you a while to truly open up to your usual counselor as well. Hopefully Morgan won't be too upset if you end up clamming up. Ah, well... His eye escapes you as you lean back into your chair. You explain the surface issues of your anxiety. Morgan has listened intently, occasionally jotting down notes and offering surprisingly insightful advice every now and then. He was truly kind and understanding. It was like he knew you for a long time. Yeah, because that's a he's your stalker. Actually, now that you think about it, had you seen him somewhere before? Um, Dr. Morgan? You began, but his mumbling cuts you off. I see, so that's how it is, he murmurs, his eyes scanning the notes he took. You shaped it uncomfortably in your seat as he took a moment to read over his his papers. Even though he was carrying an outfall, this was as much as you were willing to tell him for now. I feel there's still some things that you're keeping from me, but... But your aunt nervously play with the hem of your clothes as he speaks. Looks like our time is up, he says, standing up. Huh? What? Did you want to talk more? His voice is playful as he pushes the chair in. No, that's what I meant. I... You stumble over your words as he walks over, holding a hand out to you. You take his hand and Morgan helps you up, his hand ghosting over your lower back as he walks you out of the room. Oh. <laughs> I'm your counselor, remember? He reminds you as he guides you up the stairs and down the hallway. I'm always here if you need to talk. Right, yeah, I guess you are, you mumble. The carpet pattern is suddenly more interesting than looking at Morgan's face. Wait, does that mean I'll be seeing you again? You feel Morgan's eyes on you, his laugh echoing down the hall as the two of you walk. Of course. As silence falls on the two of you, the gears in your, hair, your head turning. You had a lot of questions, however, when you open your mouth to ask about something, we're gonna open the door to the recession area. You look back at him and he simply smiles. See you soon, Moonry? Yeah, see you soon, Dr. Morgan. You set up a follow-up session with the receptionist before leaving. We'll never come back here again. As you walk to your tar car, you can feel eyes boring into the back of your head. You can't shake the feeling of being watched as you unlock your car and get in. Goosebumps rise along the nape of your neck as you get settled into your car. Pranora gets a better view and you check the back seat just in case. There's nothing there. Of course there's nothing. Start the engine and begin to drive out of the parking lot. As you pass by the entrance of the office, you spot Morgan smiling at you in the window. He waves as he watches you leave. You quickly look away, focusing on driving. Your grip on the driving wheel makes makes your knuckles pale. That wasn't so bad, I guess, but... I never got the chance to ask what happened to my usual counselor. I killed the other counselor. Uh. Oh. Ah, oh. Oh, I forgot about you. Looks like you're finally awake. I briefly considered removing the gag from the counselor's mouth before backing away. It's truly a shame that you don't carry your office keys with you, good sir. I had to bring Murray to this dingy parking garage that I set up last minute. Oh well. Kneeling down in front of the counselor, I tied the plastic bag I held over his head. Well then, it should take a while for you to suffocate to death. Why don't I go over what I learned today while we wait? Taking a seat in the metal chair, I flipped through the notes I took during the counseling session. Ah, Murray, I can't wait to see you again. Ending to you, see you next time. Don't tell me we're actually going to come see this guy again. Now just to find ending four. Alright, this time I'm going to refuse his help. But the first other choice I made was that I stayed still. So I seemed like I was compliant with whatever he was doing. So I refuse his help to try to get out for the file. And I see pictures of me. He's literally my stalker. Oh. What was the other thing you said? I missed something. It says pictures of you, obviously. Uh, but don't touch them so curiously. He adds, reaching into his pocket. You back away fearfully, dropping the photo. Morgan simply takes out a pair of gloves, slipping them on. He breaks the photos up carefully, organizing them and placing them back into the file. 
Once they are back where they belong, Morgan sighed, running a glove hand through his hair. Looks like I have to go to plan B, which is under his seat. Yep, honestly, we could have done this the easy way, but ah, uh, what a shame. Morgan walks around the edge of the table, fastening a mask with his face, a cloth out of his pocket. Now then, hold still, will you? You can't read Morgan's expressions with his eyes darken at your resistance. He wasn't expecting much. Managing to push him off, you crawl towards the door to try and get away from Morgan. Your hand grips your ankle. Morgan lets out a grunt when you kick him, but his grip remains tight as he drops his full weight on your back, pinning you down. Shush, he whispers, pressing the cloth to your nose and mouth. You try to hold your breath, thrashing and struggling to get him off you, but it's futile. Eventually, it feels like your lungs will burst. You inhale the sweet scent of the cloth, feeling a slight headache and dizziness as sleep overtakes you. Ending four, you need more counseling. <gasps> okay, so we end up getting kidnapped. Alrighty. And that's the end of Dr. Morgan's counseling session. Um, so basically, this game is just about some. Seems like Dr. Morgan is our character stalker, and somehow he got into this. He posed as a counselor some way, somehow. I don't know how no one noticed. The receptionist is definitely not helpful whatsoever. I guess the receptionist just doesn't care. Who knows? The receptionist could be an end on this. And yeah, it's pretty interesting. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Bye!